All right, now it's time to determine if your square has parity. Parity is the most annoying part of this thing because there's a really long algorithm to it, and I despise, despise doing it. But it's part of t uh, solving the square one, and you pretty much have to learn it unless you do some other alternative method. So to explain parity, I'm going to use a deck of cards. And you're going to imagine these as the actual um, side pieces. So there's one here, one here, one here, and one here. So these numbers represent the correct slots, like the 2, the 9, the 8, and the 5. So now I'm going to get some of the pieces that we're going to move around. So I get the black ones are going to be the actual pieces. The red is going to represent where the correct spot is. So... A two and a five. And there's a two. Okay. So, all right. So, now, this would be in the solve state because the five matches with the five, the eight matches with the eight, the nine, and so on. So, if your cube has even parity, then there's going to take an even number of swaps to make the cube correct. So I'm going to shuffle this up a bit, move the black cards around, make a switch here, switch here, switch here. Okay. So to determine that, we're going to see how many times it takes to switch these edge pieces back. So I'm going to switch the 5 with the 9, so the 5 is in the correct place. That's one switch. I'm going to switch the, the 2 with the 8, so that's in the correct place. That's 2. So then I'm going to switch these two, and that's three. So that took three switches to solve, which means you have odd parity, which means you need to do the parity algorithm because you need to um, make it so that you have even parity. Why? Well, the algorithm that you do on the square one, whenever you switch, like the, I only have one um, uh, edge pair flips, these two are already solved over here. Whenever you switch a pair on one side, you have to switch a pair on the top. So, every time that you switch one, you have to switch one on top, which means if you have an even number of switches, when you switch one, and then you don't have to switch a second, you can switch these and switch these back, and then it's solved. So, that's why you need to understand parity. So, let me do another example. This would be odd parity right here, because there's only one switch left, and that's one. So, to illustrate it down here, you have your these two correct, these two need to be flipped. You switch them, that's one. There are ten cases in all that are on here. I prefer not to remember them because it's really, I prefer to just look at the cube and see uh, which, what parity case I have just by looking at it. So, when you have parity like in this one, you're going to have to do an algorithm. Let me just get these out of the way now. The parity algorithm is long, and even when you're done, there's another algorithm you have to do after that to fix parity, because you're going to get something messed up after this parity algorithm. Now, there's really no good way to memorize this just by looking at the notation. I prefer to actually just look at the actual sequence itself, or the shapes that the um, cube makes, because it's really hard to memorize the, the, the notation. I don't even know have it memorized, and that's why I'm getting this sheet out, because I don't even know it. So, get ready. This is going to be long. You might want a pencil and paper for this one, or copy it down on the right. Uh, it starts off with right, t minus 3, b minus 3, r. t minus 2, b minus, r. If r wants to go. There we go. t minus 2, B minus 2, R. B minus 2, R. T minus 2, B minus 2, R. T minus 2, B minus, R. T plus 3, B plus 3, R. Yeah, that's a really long and pointless algorithm, and you have still more work to do because it needs to be fixed. So. 
Yeah, it's not a fun algorithm to memorize, but it's uh, probably some tips for doing that is that there are shape patterns that it moves through, so if you can remember the shape patterns, that helps. And you do um, counterclockwise turns almost the whole way through until the very end. So that's what helped me try to remember it. It's still quite a beast. And even now, you got another mem algorithm memorized, which is nowhere near as hard as the other one. But it's still another algorithm. And this one, to fix this, so you get the near one side back, that one is B minus R, T minus 3, B minus 3, R, B plus, T plus R, T minus 3, B minus 3, R, T plus 2. And now you got your one side solved again. And now if you look down here, you should have even parity because I can switch these two. And now this will be solved on my yellow here. And I can switch the yellow here, the orange here. That's two switches. So I do have even parity. Now, the algorithm you're going to use here is one you've already learned before. So you have no, no more algorithms to learn. You memorize them all if you've been paying attention and memorize them as you go. Otherwise, you got some work to do. It's the same algorithm that switched these two up here. What that actually did is, while it switched these two up here, it also switched the side piece here and the one to the left. So, you want to line it up that so that when you switch two, you're going to have another two that are next to each other. So, I could switch these two, orange here, but then my blue would be here, my yellow would be here, and those aren't next to each other. So, I'm going to switch these two so I get a yellow next to orange. So, this is my front side. I've got those two right here. And it doesn't matter which one you switch up here because they're just going to switch them right back. The algorithm, which you should remember, is B minus R, B minus 3, R, B plus, T plus, R, B plus 3, R, T minus, B minus, R, B plus, T plus, R, T minus. And now you should have one switched pair up here and one switched pair down here. And you're only one algorithm away. So let's go. B minus R B minus 3 R B plus T plus R B plus 3 R T minus B minus R B plus T plus R and I think you can take it from here. And voila, you've solved square one. <sighs> so, thanks for watching my square one tutorial. Really, I mean, makes these 36 minutes of my life worth that much more. Uh, good luck with solving it, and if you still need any help, I'll be glad to answer any comments or questions you have. Again, check uh, McFerrin's webpage if you need any more additional help. Uh, I'm out. Go Giants.